Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Counterfactual Gaming. Today we're going to be talking about the Navy and the use of carrier navs. Now before we get started I'd just like to invite everyone who likes the content that they're seeing to go ahead and click like and subscribe and post a comment down below with anything that you want to see me do in the future or if you think you have a question or more knowledge about the topic by all means do so. If you've seen some of my previous content, you can tell that I have been answering questions from my audience, even when those questions are incredibly detailed, because frankly, I don't have a whole lot going on right now, except Mussolini is giving me orders. So what do I mean when I'm talking about pure CV navs? What I'm talking about is where you take a fleet that has carriers, and the only thing you put on them are carrier navs like these guys aircraft dedicated to sinking enemy ships no fighters no close air support just carrier navs and using them to create what uh, some might call an alpha strike to try and destroy enemy ships now there are a number of reasons why some players may take this strategy. And I'm going to sort of go over them and, and discuss why they can or cannot work. And then we're going to talk about overall viability and implementation versus countering such a strategy. So in this video, what I'm going to do, why a player may even want to try this approach with carriers, we're going to talk about how you would implement this approach with carriers, and then we're going to talk about how you would counter this approach. And this will give everyone a better understanding of what we're talking about. Uh, none of the things we're going to talk about today are actually the true meta, as most players would understand it. This is, it, it, and that's going to be more obvious when we get to the part where we talk about countering it, but it's going to be a tool in your arsenal as a player for saying, okay, I have this mission requirement for naval engagements. One of my tools is alpha striking with pure carrier navs. Let me show you by using some cheats and some save games what I'm talking about and how and why you would do this, okay? So we're gonna use magic cheats. We're gonna turn the AI off for testing purposes like we always do. We're gonna do allow Diplo, okay. Now, you see that the French fleet here has eight car four carriers, four battleships, 80 destroyers, and has 320 carrier navs, okay? And I'm gonna order this fleet to patrol the English Channel at uh, engage at high risk. And we're gonna go ahead and declare war on Britain. Then I'm gonna tag to the British. We're not gonna worry about any of these messages. The British here, now, for the purposes of this test, I'm gonna take off all of their planes. We're gonna have no planes on the decks, but this is an identical fleet. These ships, if you can see the stats of these ships, they are identical to the French fleet ships. And we're gonna order this fleet into the channel, engage at high risk, and we're gonna see what the carrier navs are doing. Let's tag back to France. And again, we're ignoring all the notifiers here because the only thing I carry about or the only thing I care about is what's happening in the channel. Note that both Britain and England have a bunch of level six radars, so detection's not an issue. The fleets will be able to find each other. The planes yeah, can find each other. There's, there's no issues with any sort of detection. Okay. We go through the detection phase real fast, and the naval battle starts. Now, we've got good weather. First thing we need to know about carrier aircraft, if you did not know this already, Carrier aircraft can only sortie during daylight. That means at most they get two sorties per day, not the maximum three possible sorties per day that you see with land-based aircraft that can fly at night. Important side note, carriers operating in the Arctic night may only get one sortie or no sorties per day. So if you're trying to cover Arctic convoys, carriers are not always your best choice for that. I literally watched it a multiplayer game one time as uh, the Allies tried to escort Arctic convoys with carriers and the Allies thought the game was broken until they realized that the Arctic night was preventing the carrier aircraft from flying at all. 
Okay, so we've got this naval engagement. Now the fleets are equal, except this fleet has the carrier navs. We already saw I have pure carrier navs. That's 320 carrier navs are going to attack enemy ships. All right, we're just gonna run this combat real fast. Zoom, 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 zoom. And all right, let's take a look at the results of the fight. We're gonna expand that window and take a look. Now, on the right side, we're gonna see the damage inflicted by ships and aircraft. On the left side, we're gonna see just damage inflicted by ships because the British don't have any planes. If we take a look at the damage inflicted by the carrier navs, you'll notice that carrier navs are inflicting tons of damage on uh, Victorious, Formidable, and Ark Royal. Now, I highlight those ships because those are all capital ships, okay? You'll notice that the British carriers took a beating in that battle. Their capital, their battleships also took a beating, but their carriers took a beating. Meanwhile, French carriers are completely undamaged here. French battleships are pretty okay, except for the Richelieu's kind of shot up. But this attack with carrier aircraft did a ton of damage to the British fleet. Now, this is not an IC normalized test, but I want to show you that this is the kind of thing that might be possible if you have carrier aircraft backing your fleet up. If you have no fighters and you just put pure carrier aircraft, you can get results like this against an undefended enemy. And I say undefended enemy, they don't have any planes defending them, but they do have AA guns. You'll see that uh, the Anson shot down a bunch of carrier aircraft. King George V shot down a bunch of aircraft. Uh, the French lost 60 carrier aircraft to AA guns. And if you're not sure what kind of AA guns we're talking about, uh, I gave every ship in both fleets tier three AA guns, along with dual purpose guns that provide additional anti-air. So the battleships in each fleet have around 13.6 A anti-air, not counting what the carriers and the destroyers have. So let's tag over to Britain, and I wanna take a little more in-depth look at the dead and damaged ships, particularly Victorious here, because, because the Victorious got hammered by enemy aircraft. And as you can see here, it's gonna spend a long time in dry dock getting repaired. It also has a heavy fires problem in, uh, inflicted by the enemy. Uh, and we know because of what we saw earlier that Victorious's damage came, came largely from enemy aircraft. Battleships didn't shoot up Victorious it was enemy aircraft. And so even though Victorious was properly screened by both destroyers and battleships, enemy carrier aircraft were able to swoop in and inflict damage. And I want you to pay attention to the fact that the carrier aircraft did not equally attack all ships of the fleet. Again, you saw a disproportionate amount of damage done to capital ships. So those torpedo bombers we had were not wasting their time trying to sink destroyers. They were attacking capital ships. Through the use of pure carrier navs, you could hypothetically decapitate enemy fleets, removing their capital ships. So let's go back and look at France and talk about what that means in terms of aircraft design. Now, if you recognize this, I am using some of the same saves that I had from my previous video, uh, but we're gonna talk a little more about what you should be doing with aircraft design, not things you should not be doing with aircraft design. And so, what I want to talk about is this module right here, the torpedo module. This torpedo module is a tech that basically any naval power would have at the beginning of the game. It is not an advanced technology. It is not a complicated technology. It literally comes from bombs. Like that's a pre-1936 tech. A lot of countries start with that. But it is a module that inflicts substantial damage on enemy ships. As you can see, it has a naval attack of 14 and a naval targeting of 6. Naval targeting represents the emphasis that the plane tries to put on bombing capital ships as opposed to ships. So let's watch a naval battle again. Same parameters as we did last time, but we're going to pay attention to what's happening in the middle of the naval battle and talk about what it means when we have all of those planes hitting opposing ships. Now we're gonna tag to here. Make sure we got that set up. We're gonna declare war on Britain. 
make sure the British fleet is actually set up to engage at high risk. We unpause. All right. So we're going to take a look at the first, first little bit of the battle. And you can see that we're stacking up damage over here. We're hitting Formidable, Victorious, Duke of York, and Victorious again. Now, Duke of York is a battleship. Uh, Formidable and Victorious are carriers. And I want you to notice something, though. I want you to notice something about Victorious here. And I'll zoom this in. I'll zoom this in for you a little bit. But... If you look there, you can see that Victorious's org is already at zero. And that's basically from the first sortie in the battle. You need to know two things about org in naval battles to understand what's happening here. The first thing is carriers generally do not sortie aircraft if, they're, if the org of the carrier has been reduced to zero. And two, ships that have no org are going to take a lot more damage to their actual strength. So if we continue to watch Victorious here as the battle goes on, you'll notice it's taking more strength damage, more strength damage. It doesn't have any org left to shield it from damage. And you'll notice it's already received a critical hit. It's taking more damage. Now they are all trying to flee combat. All the carriers are. We're starting to run out of room on the tooltips here. But you see Victorious is almost dead. She's trying to regain Org. And she escapes battle with 27% strength left. We're going to take a look at the after battle results. And you can see that Victorious really got hammered by the enemy aircraft. As, as expected. Like, we watched it happen live. But you should have noticed a couple of things. One, when Victorious actually ran out of org, she started taking more damage than the other ships, including critical hits. And two, the more hurt she got, the more enemy aircraft started to hammer her. Now, she got lucky and got out of that battle, but she is severely damaged. And if we go take a look at the ships in port, Victorious... It's probably going to be in port for, let's see, oh yeah, five and a half months, and she has heavy fires on her, so she won't be able to cure that critical hit until she gets completely fixed in five months worth of repair. So what this means for us is that when we are talking about pure carrier navs striking enemy fleets and enemy ships... We're trying to do enough concentrated damage towards the beginning of the fight to force capital ships to run out of org so that they can take more damage, force carriers to run out of org so they cannot function anymore, and we're trying to get extra critical hits on them before they escape battle. In other words, pure carrier navs are an attempt to create what we would call an alpha strike to win the battle sooner rather than later. Now, I've been using equal fleets here because I wanted you to see the impact of the aircraft. They're not adding just a little bit of icing on the cake. They're actually having a significant impact on the battle. Right, so now that we have a basic understanding of what the potential of this approach is in the game and why you might want to do it, let's talk about how you would implement it. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, that's very easy to implement. I'll just put pure carrier navs on my carriers and I'm done. But it's a little bit more complicated than that because of how Hearts of Iron does things. So you've seen me using various iterations of this cheap CV nav. And I'm gonna talk about why you might just stick with this as your carrier nav, and then talk about more advanced models and why you might implement them. But let's start with this as our basic carrier nav. All it has are torpedoes, again, a starting tech, and a tier one engine, and this, to be clear, this is the interwar carrier naval bomber airframe, which comes from this tech right here, okay? The 1933, pre-1936 aircraft tech. You have these 
planes available. This technology is available right here. This tech and this tech are available for most naval powers that are gonna have aircraft at the start of the game. It's off the shelf technology. So this plane could be put into production day one of the game and it is fairly inexpensive because it has the cheapest airframe you can put on a carrier, the cheapest engine you can put on it, and it's got a torpedo module, which isn't the cheapest module, but it's better than putting bomb locks on there, which I'll talk about that a little bit later. But boom, it, this is off the shelf technology, nothing fancy, you're ready to go. This plane would be viable for a lot of Alpha Strike Pure Carrier Nav uses in Hearts of Iron for three reasons. One, you don't need range in carrier combat. This stat means nothing in carrier combat. Now, if I wanted to set my planes to naval strike independent of carrier combat, that's different. But in carrier combat, range means nothing, so who cares what kind of airframe we're using, what kind of modules we put on it, nobody cares. Two, there are no modules you can put on an aircraft that will defend it from enemy AA guns. That's my golden rule for aircraft design. There are literally no modules, none of these modules, not self-sealing fuel tanks, not armored plates, none of these modules will reduce the damage an aircraft takes from any kind of AA guns, whether they're static AA, defending industry, AA guns in divisions or AA guns on planes. None of these modules, nothing matters. So you don't need to put any of those modules on there either because ship AA is just going to shoot down planes anyway. And you can't put more than one torpedo module on a carrier nav. You can put more than one bomb locks on a carrier aircraft. Again, I'll talk about that later. But you can only put one torpedo mounting on a carrier nav. So it's not like you can stack 25 modules on there. So this is a viable plane for use. You don't need a more expensive plane for doing alpha strikes with pure carrier navs from carriers. Furthermore, as I've discussed in my previous videos, carrier navs aren't shooting back against enemy aircraft, so these modules are worse than useless. They are a detriment to you because while it would boost the air attack of the aircraft, it doesn't actually do anything. So this cheap CV nav, perfectly acceptable for use as pure carrier nav alpha strikes. However, if the enemy does have sufficient fighter presence from their carriers, uh, you might want something a little more advanced. Uh, you might want to use a more advanced airframe and put armor modules on it to defend against enemy air attack, enemy fighters not AA guns on enemy ships. This is if the enemy has lots of carrier fighters. We raise that air defense value up and improve the survivability of these aircraft. But even with this plane, with a tier three engine and the three armor modules, we're still only putting that one torpedo module on there. That does make this plane more expensive. Um, it does require technology that is not off the shelf, but we're only using that advanced airframe so I can stack armor modules to improve survivability against enemy fighters. If enemy fighters are not factoring into your naval strategy, then this is way too expensive of a carrier aircraft to use for a pure carrier nav approach. Having said all of that, we could also talk about this version of carrier nav. This was something I used in a previous video. And this is an even cheaper plane than the cheap CV nav. As you can see over here, cheap CV nav was 24 production cost. This is even cheaper at 22 production cost. And this plane only costs rubber. It does not require aluminum at all. It uses the non-standard materials usage module to cut production costs and aluminum down. The only reason I do not recommend this plane is because of this value. It nerfs the air defense of the interwar carrier frame so much that this plane is very easy for enemy fighters to shoot down. I've done a bunch of tests and just take my word for it, uh, carrier nav casualties front to enemy fighters shoot way up 
when you use this module. So you don't actually come out ahead in production cost if the enemy has any fighter presence at all. However, if the enemy has no fighter presence, like none, like you can guarantee there's no enemy fighter presence on enemy carriers, then yes, go ahead and throw this module on there. You've got the cheapest plane. You won't even have to use aluminum to make these guys. It's basically a wooden biplane with a torpedo hung underneath of it. question arises, well, how would you counter that tactic? Well, the obvious answer, of course, is to use pure carrier fighters on your carriers. But you do not design carrier fighters to defeat this strategy of pure carrier navs the same way that you would normally design carrier fighters. So if you're going to defeat enemy carrier navs, especially with the enemies using a lot of them, you need a plane that looks something like this. This is the full Monomark Mark III, and this is a very cannon oriented fighter. You notice it looks very different than what I would use on land. It's got two engines, so it's very expensive. It's mounting a bunch of cannons. But this plane uses technology that you can have by 1940 and does not require uh, tech rushing cannons too. But this is a plane you could get into production early enough to matter. It is just very expensive, but it's expensive because we need the engines to support all of the weight of these cannon modules. This plane focuses on maximizing air attack, ignoring air defense, and having enough thrust to overcome the weight of these components. Why do I set the plane up like this? Well, remember, carrier navs don't shoot back. So it doesn't matter, even if they mount 30 machine guns on them, they're never shooting back. So when this plane targets carrier navs, it's never getting shot back at. It doesn't need air defense against enemy carrier navs because they're not shooting at it anyway. So it can go full on offense and inflict plenty of damage. It also doesn't need to worry too much about agility because carrier navs don't have good agility in the first place anyway. So this plane, and we're gonna, I'm gonna show it to you in just a second, but this plane will inflict enough damage on enemy carrier navs to nerf their impact in a carrier battle. So in order to demonstrate this, I've mounted a bunch of Fulmar Mark III's with those cannons on the British fleet. It's going to have four carriers full of a total of 320 of those fighters. And we're going to... And we're going to throw that against the French fleet that has uh, the more advanced carrier nav that actually has some air defense. And we're gonna see live, well, almost live, whether those carrier navs are gonna be able to get through. Set this fleet up, go there, go there, and let's roll. Declare war. Okay, now this battle starts out at night, of course, so we have to wait until the day. And we start watching enemy planes getting shot down. All right, now let's take a look at this. We do see significant damage on Victorious, but you notice that overall damage seems to be lower, except for the HMS Bychester, who for some reason got focus fired. That's a destroyer, by the way, that is not a capital ship, so if CB navs are bombing it to death, that's not really hurting the British that much. Um, Victorious kind of got hurt a whole bunch, but this cost the French a lot more aircraft and cost Britain no aircraft to do. Those very expensive carrier aircraft that they are producing to shoot down carrier navs, they didn't lose any of them fighting this naval battle. Whereas those, those advanced CV navs, which is what are on those planes, that's these things. These are the expensive planes that I talked about earlier. 
These advanced carrier nabs cost 36 a piece. That is an expensive plane to be throwing around like this. So let's tag to England, though. So if we take a look at this, it still looks like the British fleet got mauled pretty bad. Uh, Victoria still took a whole bunch of damage, and if we look at the repair queue in Dover, Greater London area, Victoria's is still pretty badly shot up. Not quite as bad as she was earlier, but still pretty bad. Um, but it cost France a lot more planes to do it this time. If that's the case, it still seems like you, you can use pure CV navs to do a alpha strike to decapitate an enemy fleet but I want to talk about how much repairs cost Victorious is going to take 5.4 months to repair so if it takes Victorious 5.4 months to repair that's about 162 days and 162 days times the production cost of one nick and if we're not sure how much one nick costs or how much one nick does uh, at current tech levels that's 2.5 per day so that's 162 days times 2.5 nick per day that's a total damage of 405 production cost required to repair victorious now let's go back to France, tag back over, tag to France. If we go back and look at this, that's 180 aircraft dead. And that's 180 aircraft dead that costs 36. That's 180 aircraft at 36 cost. For a total cost of 6,480 production costs and aircraft were lost to inflict that damage. Now, it's not just Victorious that was hurt. Uh, Anson, Duke of York, and Illustrious also took a bunch of damage, but Victorious, uh, per tradition, ate the most damage out of all the ships and became the target of focus fire. When we put those cannon-using carrier fighters on the British fleet, it now costs France far more production costs to inflict damage on British ships than it does to actually repair the damage that they're inflicting. Now, repairing ships, even if they just have a sliver of health left, is always cheaper than building entirely new ships. But those carrier fighters are cutting down on the number of British ships that are being lost. In other words, in individual naval battles, the pure carrier nav approach will alpha strike an enemy fleet and even with carrier fighter protection that fleet may have to go home and repair for a long time but they are not going to be inflicting enough damage to necessarily replace the cost in lost aircraft and that's going to wrap up our video for today i hope you got some information out of it uh, i do want to point out that someone's going to probably comment that it doesn't look like carriers are doing enough damage overall that's another discussion for another time uh it's a discussion worth having but it's not something i'm looking at answering in this particular video but regardless i think we're done here for the moment and i hope that everything is going great with all of you guys uh, we had a very stupid electrical storm today with thunder and lightning that just killed power long enough to kill about 20 minutes worth of footage but that's okay we're just talking about aircraft it's not a big deal hope things are going better where you guys are at and i want to wish all of you all a pleasant day